hi guys welcome back to my channel i'm juliana and today finally well it's only how oh, day i'm filming this on saturday but today oh, i'm sorry on sunday seven eight nine so today is nine not too long right i think i'm still in the interval of time to do my best of 2023 so I, I'm going to show you, <laughs> I wanted to, to do 10 books, I think that's a good number, but I had to put plus one, so 11 books that I'm going to show you today, and I'm going to start through... I wanted to say this doesn't have a particular order because they really don't but I wanted to rank a bit so you have an idea of well my feelings towards the books you know because that's actually what it is it's my interpretation my point of view so my my general feelings towards the books that I'm going to show you. So, starting in the 11th place, we have Siddhartha by Hermann Hess. So, this is a really short book, and this is really and this is really a voyage of a young man that wants to get out of his parents' houses house is searching for enlightenment so he's searching to be a wise man so he thinks that in his village although his father is very knowledgeable and also the elders of his town are also very knowledgeable he thinks that he he picked the realm of knowledge that they can give him so it he wants more he is unsatisfied and he goes with a friend in his voyage to get enlightenment. But what happens is that he deters from his objective. He passes long years and many years in a state that has, any, no, has nothing to do with enlightenment. So he will be knowledgeable he will acquire knowledge but mundane knowledge not what he was looking for and then we have all the adventures and the people that he meets that will give him perspectives about life will open him to different parts of the world so on and so forth so it's very beautiful I love the writing, it's very poetic, so I think this will be a wonderful reading for you. If, of course, you already have heard about Herman Hess, I'm sure. This was the only book that I read from Herman Hess, my first and only. Uh, of course, I want to read more, but for an entry, I think this one was wonderful. In 10th place, I put... The Horseman on the Roof by Gian Giono. So, uh, <laughs> I wanted to read this book for a very, very, very long time. Why? Because I watched a movie with Juliette Pinoch and Oliver Martinez. Uh, and the movie is spectacular. It's a romantic movie, so a romantic, kind of platonic. So, but it's wonderful. This is, for you to have an idea, one of my favorites of all time. I'm talking about a movie. When I heard that the movie was based in a book, I was eager to read the book. But of course, here in Portugal, we don't have a translation of this particular book by Gian Giono. So for a very long time, because 
okay, I'm talking many years, I'm talking about my adolescent, okay, so there my English was not so great, so as we don't have a translation here in Portugal, I never was able to read the book, <sighs> but, <laughs> and then I, I kind of forgot about it, but then uh, in my early 20s, I, for some reason, came upon the movie again and my eagerness to um, pick up the book came again and I put it in my wish list, this, this edition. But, you know, I never came to buy it for some reason. Uh, so I, I bought this last year, I think. And I read this in February, January, February uh, of 20, no, last year, no, in 2022 I bought it, in 23 I read it. I'm thinking I'm still in 23, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, well, I was looking for the platonic romance of the movie because I loved the characters, the, the, the character development was excellent. I loved the characters' personalities of um, Angelo and... how is she called? Now I don't remember, but okay. I, I loved them. So I was looking for that and it happens kind of in the book, but how can I... I don't want to give you spoilers because I think perhaps you will be deterred from reading the book and I don't want to do that because the book is excellent. So here we fall Angelo that is an Italian man, uh, 25 years old uh, and he at the time Italy wasn't independent, an independent country. You, in, now I don't remember which country was in power at the time in Italy, but in my video, in my review video of this book that I will link it in the cards and down below, I there I will explain everything that I'm trying to do now and I don't remember. But as I was saying, we follow Angelo and he lives near the frontier in the north of Italy, near the frontier with France. And he goes to France and along his way, uh, at the time, this is in 1830, 1830s, that, were, that, were, that was happening a cholera epidemic. So he's faced with death. And then he meets many people along his way. And there is a passage here with a nun that is my favorite passage of this book, really. I think it was fascinating how the dialogue went and what they were doing. So if you come upon to read it, let me know what you thought about that passage with the nun because it was my favorite. And so he meets a woman and together they are trying to, she to come back to the south of France, more at south, and he to come back to Italy. So they kind of make a partnership to make a voyage and trying to deviate from the um, army that was trying to conceal the people in the towns so like in a quarantine so that the disease d uh, didn't spread so they are trying to deviate from them and take root she to the south of France to, now I don't remember, Theos. Oh, she's Pauline. And um, he to Italy. And so many things will happen along the way. They, many, many things, okay? And there's com there comes a point uh, more at the end of the book that is really fundamental to the story or kind of a climax of the story and after that I was hoping for more and I have to say that the movie 
and the book are not the same. It's not the same kind of vibe that I was expecting. Is the, I'm, I'm explaining it wrong. The vibe is the same, but I mean, in a romantic type of way, it wasn't. But I still, I thought this book was wonderful because I love the writing of Gian Giono and I don't know, it was so different, so reflexive, so you kind of, this book stays with you. I think that's what, that's my point. Okay, in ninth place, I put The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge by Philip K. Dick. This is the science fiction. Of course, you may know Philip K. Dick very well, or at least you heard about him. He's kind of the father of science fiction. The, not the father, but the father, I suppose, kind of the mother is Mary Shelley with Frankenstein. But um, I, I meant in terms of popularity and people enjoying the stories, Philip K. Dick is kind of there. And this, again, is not my first endeavor in Philip K. Dick. The, from him, I read Do Androids Dream of Electric Ship? Ubik. The Double, double Man or The Double, something like that. And did I read the double? I think I did. And Tears My Policeman or something. Now I don't really mem remember the titles. So, okay. We are in a, futur a futuristic world where we go to Venus, we have colonies or kind of agriculture in Venus, the planet, I mean. We have colonies in Mars. We voyage to different galaxies, so, you know, here he also talks about climate change and how the surface of the Earth is overheated and you can't be on the surface for too long. And we follow, how is he called? Barney Meyerson. And he's, he works for a company and he's kind of the advisor, the marketing advisor of the company. But the main plot is that we here have two men that in the undercover are producing drugs, illegal drugs. One of them, one of them is very su successful. I think his drug is called Candy. Now I don't really have in my memory the names, but if you go to my review video, there I will explain everything. But so, these drugs, or the first man that we that the book talks about, his drug takes you to a place that can be in the past, can be in the future. And you need miniatures, objects in miniatures, to kind of be in your dream. A particularity of, about this drug is that you can go and be in the dream with other people that took the drug. So you, it can be a, a group dream, you know? So, and then... The other man, Palmer Eldridge, comes with a, a new drug, Z something, that it's for illimited time. So the candy is for an hour or some, more or less, and the Z something is like almost eternal. You can be there for a very long time. So there, what they kind of compete with each other or one of them the first one is seeing that people are you know changing the use of the drug for the new drug and he's kind of worried because money but 
it's not kind of the competition between them. It's not like that. It's it, this is talk. This talks about religion. This talks about the use of drugs in a terms of manipulation and control. And the point is. Who is in real in real in reality in control of you if he, you use the drug? And the three stigmata is that Palmer Elrich has particularities about his appearance. So he has a metallic arm, a prosthesis. Um, he has a robotic eye, and something else. So three stigmata as Jesus, you know. So. Here you have a really parallel will with Christianity and he you have the new Christians I think that's the new religion that he invents in this book and as always my experience with Philip K Dick till this point in every single book I read about uh, of um Palma, of <laughs> Philip K Dick they all end in open endings you you feel like or you be like you don't know if what you read till that point was really what was happening because you are kind of being in the perspective of a certain character and then at the end even at the last line of the book you be like what the heck happened? Who was really in control? Was this really just a dream? Was this real, really the opposite what, of what had happened? You don't know. So it's wonderful. I love those kind of endings. And the journey that you make with this book is extremely curious and pe peculiar in a way. But... This plot is so original that you will be in wonder. And also, this is really a short book, so it be a speedy, speedy, is that a word? It will, it will be really fast for you to read and you won't, and you will not want to put this book down, so go for it. Then in eighth place, Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. So, as the title says, this is an interview with a vampire. I suppose you have already watched the movie with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt. I have seen it also many times. And I have seen it again in last October to have my memory refreshed after reading the book. And I have to say, yes, I prefer the book. And this is uh, a boy that we never know the name. They are in San Francisco, California, United States of America. And they are in a kind of apartment or something. They met in a bar. And this boy is kind of interviewing different people about their life story. And they find it, this particular man very peculiar because he presented himself as being a vampire. But what we have here is, they, is them already in that place, in that apartment or wherever. And the boy is preparing his recorder to record the interview. But we find out that the boy doesn't believe that this man is really a vampire. He thinks he has some kind of mental problem um, of mental disorder and that makes him believe that he is a vampire. Louis is the name of the vampire. He says that he is over 200 years old and he begins to tell his life story since he was not a child but when he was 20 the early 20s so when he became the man of the family 
because his father passed away and they have they have money so they have they have lands in the surroundings of New Orleans in the United States and he was taking care of his mother his sister and his younger brother and he had a particular connection I think with his younger brother and something happens with him that makes Louis come to a vortex and come across Lestat and Lestat was already a vampire and was him who turned Louis into a vampire so then we have him telling the story of what happened after that or till that point and after and it's so so involving this story and we will meet Armand that's another vampire and I love him I'm I was in love with him <laughs> uh, perhaps my favorite yes I can I think I can say that my favorite character of this book is so mysterious so calm and put together like a true vampire or as I imagine a vampire to be but I love all the characters of course and there's here a little girl that is the soul of this book but you know you will go through a ride if you enjoy the genre and if you enjoy the character of a vampire I think this is wonderful and I'm eager to continue this series I want to read all the books of the series and yes I don't know when that will happen but I will make an effort to do that then in seventh place I put Amok by Stefan Zweig so this is Amok and other stories in this this is a Portuguese edition but in this particular collection we have Amok letter from an unknown woman and the invisible collection so this is a collection of novellas and my favorite was Amok this wasn't my first endeavor with Stefan Zweig from him I already read Marie Antoinette a biography and I really loved it I have a project for that so in February I think so next month if everything goes well you will see a video about it but I I really love the style of writing of Stefan Zweig and this collection they are all very different stories but something that happens that I really enjoyed was that we start with ca some characters or um, a character that we think is going to be the protagonist but actually they will be introductory character to us meet another character that will tell a story that will be the main plot I'm hoping to have explained it in the way that you can understand it yeah I found it fabulous and that's why it's here so there you go then in sixth place I put Christmas a history by Judith Flanders this is non-fiction about Christmas so about traditions that led to the more popularized traditions that we have nowadays surrounding Christmas so this is focusing on Europe and the United States and Canada but this focuses a bit on England not to be deterred because she talks about Germany, Denmark, um, Ireland so, so where some of the more popular traditions came from uh, but we have here um, not so long but a part of, the, of this book that will talk about the monarchy in England and how that influenced the traditions that we have nowadays perhaps not in all countries but the majority of countries talking about Europe, United States and Canada so 
this was fabulous at the end she has recommendations of other books about also the history of christmas by other authors that i'm eyeing on and i already put them in my wish list for books to buy in the next few years so i don't know if i will do maybe i will do videos about them we shall see so there you go then in fifth place i put winter stolces by rosamund pilcher this is fiction and this is surrounding christmas uh, so I think this starts in the spring and it goes up to Christmas Eve and here we have a conjunction of characters that some of them know each other and are and have familiar links with each other others are complete strangers but they will come together in a house in Scotland and they will pass till uh, well, because this book ends in Christmas Eve, so we don't know what happens. Well, we are hinted what shall happen, but we don't know for sure what happens after the Christmas Eve. So they will be together in this house and every single character has its own problems, comes with his own baggage and in a wonderful and warm kind of way every single one of them will be helped by the others come to a peaceful point in their lives because they went there of course this, ha this has secondary characters that are also important to the plot but this is wonderful and i advise you to start reading this kind of in november and go from there and you may, perhaps will come to a point in december that you will be kind of reading in real time with the days that are that the plot are happening in the story and i'm i'm talking because that was my experience and it was wonderful because i was really looking forward to christmas reading in the think in the 20 in the 20th of december and the plot is happening in the 20th it's so fun and you will kind of accompany the days <laughs> that the plot are happening in real time and that is so kind of yes this is the time you know i don't know it was wonderful so there you go oh then in fourth place i read or I read, I finished this year, not this year, in 23. I finished Les Miserables by Vitor Hugo. I don't have in, um, in my possession the physical books because I wanted to, I have, but I was seeing kind of problems with the translation because I acquired them in a Portuguese translation. And I was seeing problems with the translation, so I sold them and now I want to acquire the same so the same book but by another publisher. So now I don't have a physical uh, book to show you, but uh, I finished Les Miserables and of course this book has fillers, a lot of fillers and very long. And I'm talking about the Battle of Waterloo. It's so dispensable because it's not like Victor Hugo is being historically correct. And it adds nothing to the main plot. It's filler. But beyond that, the main focus of the book is excellent. And it's so engaging. Of course, in the beginning, in the first chapter, you kind of don't know where the story is going, why we are following a certain character, and we, you are kind of confused because you thinking that was my experience. Wasn't this about Jean Valjean? 
but uh, we start with a priest, but you'll, you kind of understand why Victor Hugo went there. The adventures that Jean Valjean passes through are so over the top and in this book coincidences happen that you kind of feel that will never happen in reality but you know this is a fictional book so everything can happen and everything is possible but you know beyond that it's a wonder was a wonderful reading experience although i took too long to read it but that was my own fault so but uh, i highly advise you to pick this up and if you come across the waterloo passage pass it through because it's not going to add anything to your reading experience it's only only filler just end in the last lines of that passage and move on then my top three so in third we have the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tove Levson. So I thought this was a true non-fiction. I thought this was a true autobiographical novel. But in later weeks, um, I'm kind of understanding that perhaps this has some fictionalized passages that Tove added to this book because this is divided in three so childhood youth and dependency i think that's how it is in english because this is a portuguese edition is in this isn't discovered beautiful so now i'm not really sure if this is true non-fiction an, auto, an autobiography or, or this is kind of fictionalized autobiography so if you know please let me know in the comments in which category this stands by because now I'm not sure but well in here we have Tove kind of telling us her life story till a certain time in her life this is this was kind of a, a different experience of, of reading because as you can see this almost there is really rare to have paragraphs so she tells the the story of her life and the dialogues that she had with people without punctuation so it's kind of so that was a different experience and at first i was kind of find it uh, finding it strange and i have to accustom it to it but after a while i kind of enjoyed it so you know i'm not going to tell you everything in here because that's not the point of this video if you want to know more please go watch my review video but i loved it and her life and something that a decision i i say this many times but a decision that she made in a point in time because she met a man was the fru the full curl point that turned over her life in 180 degrees i don't know i don't think i can say it's a common way of being presented to drugs because i don't know how is the normal way to be presented to drugs but you will find out that it's not perhaps the way you are thinking so it's very very different you if you read it you will understand why and you do have to read this book because it's so important to read about people's experiences and people that live in another time in history also for historical reasons of course but for you to through reading know about the way the ways of life and the experiences of people 
that are so far away from your reality. And I think that's so important. And that's one of the things that I think reading permits and allows us to have th that knowledge and experience other points of view without leaving your sofa. So that's wonderful. So please, please pick this one up. And the second one is Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. So this is historical fiction and this talks about the 300s of Sparta. And we follow here a slave and how we came to be in or how he came to uh, go to Sparta, how he became a slave, and how he was in the battle of the 300s with the, the Persian Empire. I loved this book. Although I knew how the story was going to end, because, you know, history, but I was there with the characters, cheering for them and hoping that the ending was, was going to be different and they will be, would be victorious. Of course, that's not what happens, but here you have an homage to the women of Sparta and how they were the pillar of strength to all Greece and to Athens particularly and how Spartans make or made their sacrifice so that Athens has time to um, gather their army, make a strategy and win the war against the Persians. And many historians say that if it wasn't for that moment in time and for this event, for this historical event, if that didn't happen, perhaps Europe and philosophy, the lead thinking of European or of the West, wouldn't be what they are today. And our societies will be very different if Greece had, be, had been won by the Persian Empire. So that makes you think, and although this is fiction, you kind of understand it. You kind of feel the weight of some historical events in our times in current day. So that is so magical, so overwhelming in a way to think that this man in so many years ago made made a difference to your way of life today. So that is wow, you know? So please pick this one up. And the last one is Budenbrooks by Thomas Mann. This is my first choice, so my number one. These supposedly were in the 12 books for 2022 challenge, but I couldn't uh, finish it in uh, 22, so it went by to January 23, so that's why it is in this list. But who cares? So this is a familiar or a family drama, I should say. And this is the, the, the decadence of a family. And this book glues you for the characters. And my favorite character of this book is Hanu. So this follows, I think, four, gen four or three generations. Uh, and Hanu is the last generation of this family. And, oh man... So, I'm, I'm going to tell you my reading experience. So, the first 30 to 50 pages of this book, I was kind of feeling it, that it was so boring. So, I was not getting the point. 
I was not understanding why this book was the favorite of so many people. I, <laughs> I thought of the benefit. But you have to go through those pages and then you will enter the most beautiful story that you will ever read. Uh, before this one, I have already read Thomas Mann, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann. And I loved that book. I loved the writing. I, I fell in love with the style of Thomas Mann. His punctuation is on point. And I love when authors take um, care of their punctuation. And it wasn't different in this one, in Budenbrooks. So Thomas Mann became, just in two books, one of my favorite of authors. And this year, or okay, in December of 23, so last year, I bought two more books from Thomas Mann and I have two more to read that I had already bought. So I have to go through them, but I'm eager to do that. And the, if you like family sagas, if you like to watch or to read, I mean, things not going so well in the story and for the characters, you know, dramas you will love this book and for many reasons this is the decadence it's for kind of genetic reasons in the weird kind of way it's for bad business decisions it's for disease it's for bad marriages so bad decisions in a, in a general point so so many reasons but you will figure you will going to figure out why this family little by little went down but at the same time the ending is so beautiful it's going to happen a tragedy well not only one of course because this is decadence but oh man this the chapters of hanu are so beautiful so i don't know what what else to say you have to read this book Okay, so there you go. Finally, this, this video went for too long. But these are my 11 books, my favorite books from 23. I would really like to know which books were your favorites. I want to <laughs> add to my wish list other titles, other authors. And know from you, I always love to hear from you. So please let me know. And yeah, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on all socials, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, Twitter. I will link them down below in the box description, so go there. You know, it's important because sometimes is for some random reason I can't access to my account on YouTube. Maybe I can on my socials. So if I have to warn you about something, I will do so through my socials. So it's kind of important for you to follow me there. So you can be up to date with things that I may have to tell you so please do so and I would love to check with you there so yeah I will see you on the next one bye